allow me to introduce you to a machine that before I got it, I didn't even know it existed. The Lux One Royal. Looks very royal indeed. We've got a box of stuff to go through. Let's have a look. Yes, hello my vacuum cleaner chums and chumettes. How are you today? This rather interesting looking machine, and to me as somebody in the UK, it looks very American. As in the whole layout and style of it. It is a Lux 1R. I don't know if you can date these. I don't know where it hails from. It's a DH20M with Dutch TUV, which I think is their version of our Beeb. Various, <coughs> excuse me, various electrical safety bits and bobs. Although if I was a betting man, I would say that it might actually be a few years old, because I think, from what I've read, this is an anniversary model. So, that says from 1901, it could be from 2001, but I'm hoping that you're all going to comment and tell me what it's actually from, because I don't know. So what have we got? Well, we have the machine itself. We have a very clunky power hose. It's almost great, but it's terrible. It's so stiff. It's not a fully cloth covered hose. In fact, where it's wearing thin there, you can see that underneath it is just a plastic crush proof hose. They've just covered it in fabric-y vinyl to make it, you can see it inside as well, just to make it appear cloth. Which means at the top here, where it's a bit frayed, I don't know if that, I reckon that this very loose handle grip must have something to do with that. I reckon it should go further back. But who knows? It is an electronic machine with a cable that wraps around the outside of the handle, but is there a straight suction? Because this very long, very warm piece here forms the start of the extension wand, which is a one piece wand. To adjust the height, you actually do it from here, which is a bit stiff. There we go. So that's how you adjust its height, like so. This is the machine end, and looking at that, I had an Electrolux Mondo that would have used that, and I could have tried out the whole power kit on the Electrolux Mondo, but never mind, eh? From there, we have this short little cable, which goes from the hose end down to the power head. Yes, this is an electrically powered power head very rare in the UK and when I got the machine completely seized up it was rusted up so we took it apart I was at a friend's house at the time I was at another vacuum cleaner collectors so we had it apart stripped it got it running again and no it works this is a PB1 whatever the heck that means so we have that what else do we have well we have the combination Carpet and hard floor tool, which has seen a very long and tragic life. There's an elastic band wrapped around the wheel there. It doesn't really move. For some reason, the brushes go up further at the back than the front. And in use, it sort of works. And just moving it here, you can make it work. So that's on carpet. I, I can't really, sh it's difficult to show really. That's on carpet. That is supposedly auto. There is a rubber membrane inside. And this is supposed to be with the brushes up, which they just barely are. So it works, but isn't very pretty. We have a miniature little power head. That is just a suction channel. And this is the actual brush roller and looking at it oh no there is a suction i didn't think this had a suction channel it does it's just hidden in there 
This is a PL1 with a little cable attached that has a spring. This doesn't sound great. We'll listen to that in a minute. What else do we have? Well, we have a crevice tool. Nice standard of crevice tool there. Nothing wrong with that. We have Electrolux's fantastic butterfly tool, but a little bit updated because we have the brushes there. And if I, hang on, let's just take this off of here. You can put the wand in here to have a dusting brush. They're quite stiff bristles. Or you put the wand in this end and it opens out into an upholstery tool. Unlike the originals, this has litter pickers on it. And then there's your upholstery tool. So we have the butterfly tool. We have some bags, which I think are pattern because I've seen genuine bags for sale and they've got some writing on here. So there's two pattern bags there. And then this which seems to be an entire replacement long cable for reasons I'm not entirely sure about. It's never been opened. Factory sealed. So I don't quite know where that came from. I'm going to leave it. And that's it. There's nothing else. There isn't any instruction manuals, I'm afraid. That is it. There's a bag, which the bag came in, so I'll pop those back in there. And here we go, let's have a look at the machine itself. Now the first thing we'll do before we plug it in is have a look at the plug, because this caused us a fair bit of merriment. It's got a two core cable and a plug with a switch. So you plug it in, switch the plug on, then you switch the plug on, which is very odd indeed. Not entirely sure what it is, it's an Amiga plug. Certainly a nice little curiosity piece more than anything. The cable itself is very long, but has done what all these two core cables seem to do, which is twist up. And I've never been too successful getting them untwisted. You can untwist them a little bit, but they never go back to how they should be. While the cable's out, we'll have a look at the cord we want, which isn't too bad. It does make some odd noises, I think it could do with a spot of tension. But, yeah, there it is. And it pulls the cable in, it's perfectly adequate. Let's get it plugged in and we'll move it a bit closer. So this is the main machine. It is plugged in and if we switch it on, it, I think it goes into auto. Yes, it does. So all the lights are on. But it works in reverse. If you block the suction, it turns the power down. As soon as you let go, it ramps it up, which is interesting. There's a little bag slider here, which I'm manipulating. So if I do that, it goes right down to 600. Open it. And up they go. Or you can have it in minimum mode, which is nice and quiet. Or maximum, which is maximum really. And it turns off quite nicely. While we're at this quite good angle, I'll show you the filter. Which does that. It is a genuine filter, because it says Lux on it. It's a little bit dirty, but I'll be honest, not too bad. It's made out of that stupid paper material. That is terrible, really. You can see the cord reel as well in there, but the whole thing is filthy. And needs a bit of love, so I'll pop the filter back in. There we go, so the filter is in. Here we have a parking bracket that I don't actually know if it turns the machine off. Let's try. It does. So the side parking slot, here's the hand, has a switch in it that 
just like Mila's, pulls the machine. There is another parking bracket here, but that doesn't have anything. That's for storing the machine, I think. Up here, we have the hose cover. And under here is where the bag goes. They are tiny little bags. There's also another filter in here, which looks very washable to me. That'll be fine going through the washing machine. And there's the motor. I think it'll still turn on without the bag on. Yeah, so there's no fail safe there, although you can't shut the door without a bag being fitted because of that part there. So we'll pop the bag back in. And there we go. So what's it actually like for cleaning? Well, it's not too bad. It is, I'm going to say, very clunky. The whole machine is long and this stiffish hose does not help. But it has all right suction. It has all right suction. And of course you can plug in the various tools. I'm not going to stick the extension wand on because there's no need. So we'll just manually do this. You put that on there, then you have to plug this end into here. And then the power nozzle works. Ah. power nozzle can make some odd noises every now and again so it's still not 100% but it runs and the light works and when it jams up that little light there turns red which is what it did when we first got it. This is the other tool, the combination tool. And it does try to work, bless it. So I think that just needs a good internal clean out. Glue these torn bits of rubber back down onto there and it will look 100% better. Obviously we have the small tools, we don't need to look at those, but we have this little mini turbo head, which the last time I used it sounded pretty terrible. So don't expect it to be lovely. The little power head isn't very happy at all, bless it. But it's quite good. And it does work very well indeed. I mean, this power head is a little bit soft. It's not, I think it, it looks like the pneumatic aero brush, just with a massive tube on top of it. Because it's got the same sort of design. It's very narrow, but it's obviously been well used. But it seems to work okay. Let's throw a bit of dirt down and see how well it copes. The other slight fail about it is there's no clip for this. So if you just clip it on, you end up with it dangling down there. You have to wrap the whole thing around the wand and then clip it on. So it still hangs down a little bit, but that should work. Right, dirt. Right, so I've emptied the Kirby bag, which was crying out for attention, 
And before we go and stick the turbo bus straight through the middle, which will jam up with all of those big chunks, we'll just get the big bits up with the straight suction. On that. I reckon that should do it. Now, if I just zoom you in a little bit, actually, you'll probably see more like that, won't you? You'll see full 1080p on your screens. I can't see 1080p on my little camera viewfinder. We'll plug the power head back in. Come on, there's this little shaver socket. That wasn't even clipped in, there we go. All right, let's run this around and see how it works. On Max again. too bad I'll be honest I've used better but then again I have used worse one thing I fancy doing while I have a big bag of curvy dirt here tip a bit more out is I want to see if the bag full light works which if I can try and position you so you might be able to see it because I don't know what it looks like is that end light there let's see how much of this I have to pick up before that comes on Yeah. Ah, oh, there we go. Oh, and that is very full. One might almost say that I bricked the back. Oh, there's a spring there. I wonder what that's from, there'd be a Dyson somewhere missing a spoon. Now to pull the bag out there is a little handle, wow. Look it's growing. What a very full bag. Damn it, we've got some more dirt now because some has overspilled. I right, know, I've still got the dirt devil over there. If you're watching this you'll be very out of canon because the Dirt Devil After video was filmed just before this and the Dirt Devil After video is going live a lot sooner. So I need to put the bag into it just to make it close. There we go. That should work there. Yep. The light has gone off so we are all good. Just pop the hose back there and out of the way. We'll unplug it, switch it off at its switch. Put that over there. In fact, no, I'm being silly. We'll use the straight suction nozzle. Look me messing around getting other vacuums there. Well, I'll just put a new bag in there. Sod it, you may as well use it. You can always buy more bags if needed. So we want to take off this one and get out this one. And we'll see how well this works. It's in auto. I'm going to leave the machine on auto. Oh, wait, I've got the switch to switch on. So yeah, in all 
Otto, you can you can sense that it is working. That's not too bad. And there we go. That is my Electrolux One Royal. So we'll give this a refurbish. Sadly, this metal part isn't great. There's a big stain there, which may or may not buff out, and it's just covered in lots of little dents and pock marks. Which again, if this is just a skin and comes off, I might be able to do something with it. But if it's not, I'm afraid it's going to have to stay. So I shall wind the cord up and say thank you very much for watching and I shall see you soon. Bye bye.